I'm gonna show you five of the best lunch options in the Outer Banks, and that's starting right now. Just because the vibe at the Outer Banks is fun in the sun, doesn't mean that you can't enjoy a great lunch in between trips to the beach to hold you over until dinner and cocktails as the sun goes down. There is no lack of options along Highway 158, but I'm here to whittle down that list a little to give you a few places to start. I've chosen a few different types of lunch here, so there is sure to be something to please everyone in your party. In addition to more than five restaurants that I have for you today, I also have money-saving hats, so stay around for that. Kicking off the list, let's start with a really fun spot which is actually only open for lunch, Spanky's Grill in Kitty Hawk. As you're driving down Highway 158, the logo here might catch your eyes. It has that definite like vacation cartoony vibe, kind of like Senior Frogs. Otherwise, this place is completely unassuming both outside and inside. They serve all your favorite food from hot dogs to burgers to barbecue, fish, hush puppies, funnel cake fries, and even alligator. There's something on the menu to satisfy just about anyone. On our most recent visit, I tried the drive-in burger. A half pound burger topped with cheese and an onion ring and also served with onion rings. This is totally my kind of burger, and it's nothing fancy. And when you look at the prices and the ambiance, you shouldn't expect anything fancy. The burger here was very nicely cooked, onion ring nice and crispy. I liked adding a little bit of barbecue sauce to give it that kind of rodeo cheeseburger vibe. During this visit, we were actually cashed out by the owner, who obviously takes a lot of pride in what they do there at Spanky's. He even told me about a food challenge that they have there, and I'm gonna actually recommend trying this only if you're a savage. For a goof, they created a two pound burger challenge, and they call it the Viking Burger. It's on the menu. They've sold over 4,000 of these over the last 20 years. It's gotten to the point where they now tally up the winners per state and they compete that way. So at the end of the season, they'll tally up per state how many people have completed the challenge and then the state will be the winner as far as the Spanky's Food Challenge. This could be a fun event to do if you're with a bunch of people, especially if they're all into like big eating and also if you're bored of the beach. But there's some times where you want to actually be overlooking the beach when you're having lunch. And for times like that, there's a place called Fish Heads Bar and Grill. Fish Heads is tucked away in South Nags Head. You need to take a few turns off Highway 158, headed toward the ocean to find it. Fish Heads is overlooking a pier that actually overlooks the Atlantic Ocean, it's the Outer Banks. And actually the main attraction at Fish Heads is their bar. They have over 40 beers on tap and they also offer cocktails and they have margaritas on tap. So you know that's what I had to try. I love this because it definitely has that like party vibe served in a plastic cup. And I think actually at night this place gets pretty lively. Who doesn't want to party on a pier with plastic cups filled with margs. Come on. The ambiance here is a little loud and it's also visually distracting, starting with the fact that the beach that Fish Heads overlooks is absolutely beautiful, to the fact that there's this long pier where there's actually people fishing there, and then there's all the funny drink koozies that are adorning the ceiling. You're absolutely not gonna be bored at Fish Heads. In fact, if you're like me, there's so much going on at Fish Heads that it'll probably distract you from actually figuring out what you want from the menu. The food menu has a wide variety of things. Sandwich Sandwiches, burgers, hot dogs, seafood, shrimp, nachos. On our last visit, I tried the shrimp basket and for a few extra bucks, I upgraded my fries to chili cheese fries. The shrimp were just as expected, good batter, good crunch, a perfect little bite in a chill place. The fries were totally insane, but totally my style. The chili on top had a good amount of spice, the cheese on top was American, and it just soaked right into those fries. A little slaw on the side, nicey nice. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that this was a totally heavy lunch, but sometimes you gotta do it. And this actually brings me to my first bonus hack, because sometimes you can load up for lunch, but not always. One thing I recommend at least one day at the Outer Banks is to load up on a big breakfast and just bring drinks to the beach. When you're ready to do that, I'll leave a link in the description down below with a video just like this one highlighting the top five breakfast spots in the Outer Banks. I mean, you can also do something like that and then do something crowd-pleasing for lunch like pizza or snacks. And I know you're thinking, Jerry, you've come all the way to North Carolina from a state, New York, that arguably has the best pizza in the United States. You can't be serious. And to that I'll say, it actually is possible to get good New York style pizza outside of New York. On our last visit, completely on a whim, we decided to try a place called Southern Shores Pizza in Kitty Hawk. Nothing fancy, just some cheese pizza, some garlic knots, a little salad. One thing I noticed while I was there is they actually use some of the same tomato products that I've seen here in New York and I've actually worked with. So that was promising. 
icing. Upon tasting the pizza, I was actually surprised. Now, was it the greatest pizza of all time? Absolutely not. But I can't say it was any worse than any of the places that are in my area where I am upstate New York, which is miles from New York City. But if you factor in that you're in a beautiful place right off the ocean and you're a stone's throw away from a place that makes pretty decent New York style pizza, it was pretty good. I know even though I explained that, you're probably still skeptical. And I'm gonna double down even more with the next controversial pick, bagels. Bagels are actually a popular thing down in the Outer Banks. I've noticed that the quality of the bagels vary, but on this last visit, we found a place called Barrier Island Bagels that has a bunch of sandwich options and also a bunch of varieties of bagels, as well as different varieties of cream cheese. So the possibilities are endless. And there's another thing to note at this place. In addition to the dine-in space, they also have this cute little bar where they have cocktails that are designed for you to enjoy while you're waiting for them to make your bagel stuff. It's something to consider if you're looking to get a jump on some day drinking, especially since you gotta wait for them to make your lunch sandwiches anyway. On the latest visit to Barrier Island Bagels, I tried a sandwich called the Delbert, and that was advertised on the board as every meat with egg and cheese. I opted for that on a Sriracha Everything Bagel, and they skipped the Sriracha and the Everything Bagel and just gave me an Everything Bagel, but it's fine, not a deal breaker, and if it was a deal breaker, I wouldn't recommend you go there. The other thing is, the wording of this on the menu is a little bit confusing. It says every meat on the menu, but they left out a whole bunch of lunch meats, so I guess that meant every breakfast meat, but even if you go there, they didn't include the Scrapple, but I'm okay with that. I don't know how I feel about Scrapple. It's really good for the quality of the bagels. As a New Yorker, I completely approve. On a previous visit, we actually found a place called New York Bagels. This place was decent, maybe not as great as Barrier Island Bagels. This is more of like a bagel shop where you can just go in, order, and get to takeout as opposed to a sit-down restaurant. No bar at this place, but both places actually make very good sandwiches. So I would say either way, you can't go wrong. And if you want something a little bit easier, here's another lunch hack for you. And it's kind of similar to the first one, but it kind of needs to be stated on its own. There are supermarkets up and down Highway 158 that can totally help you out on the days that you don't want to leave the beach for lunch. Plan ahead, pick up some nice rolls, some cold cuts, maybe a little Duke's mayo. They have Hellman's too, but since we're in the South, this is Duke's country. Pick up some chips, make a little sandwich, and bring all of it to the beach. This way you don't have to interrupt your fun in the sun, leaving the beach, getting in the car, waiting for food, and you'll probably save a few bucks doing it this way too. If you're getting value out of this video, be sure to hit it with a like and subscribe if you're a food lover. When it comes to crowd pleasing, ice cream is an obvious hit. Now, I'm not saying to substitute ice cream for lunch, even though you're an adult, you can do what you want. What I am saying is check out a place called Kill Devil Custard in Kill Devil Hills, where in addition to their homemade custard, which is completely amazing and a delicacy unto its own, they serve up some amazing burgers and a thing called beach fries, which I would say if you're gonna go to the Outer Banks, this is something that you have to try. Kill Devil Custard also makes this thing called a Wicked Waffle Sunday, and you can learn more about that by clicking into the video right here.